and uh, our scientists put a date for 1,400 to 1,800 years. And she is that old. Um, the second thing was the white powder, which was covered, is diatomaceous earth. And uh, under the microscope, you can see the crustaceans of, of that. And, it, 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 you know, I've been asked a few times, where are these locations? And I asked, I asked the Wakairos, you know, I said, she's covered in diatomaceous earth. She said, yes. I said, and where did you get them from? She said, well, it was a cave or a tomb in the Nazca region. She wouldn't tell me. I said, okay. I said, uh, anything else? She said, yes, there was a big magnetic anomaly there. And I thought, okay, they're giving me information here. So what I did is I cross-referenced magnetic anomalies on the Google map in oh. the Nazca region. And I got a hit. And then what I did is I zoomed in and I started to see diatomaceous earth around. Oh. So I knew, I kind of know the location. So I said to the guys, I said, look, guys, you know, I've kind of worked out where this location is. You know, is there just no way I can go up there and have a look? And they said, look, if you go up there, it's a big desert. Yeah. Nobody will find you. You know, if you go up there, you'll be, you'll be shot, you'll be killed. Wow. And um, that was enough. That was enough to keep me away. From Grant, you wow. know? There's, a, there's a limit to my, uh, to my investigation. And you know, what? I really, really wanted to do it. I really wanted to. What do you think was uh, with the, uh, with the magnetic anomaly? What do you think that's about? The magnetic anomalies. Now, what I found through our three, we've done, but we've been on this about three, three or four years now, these magnetic anomalies. What we're finding is a very high correlation between profound UFO phenomena and these incidents of beings being seen in areas where these magnetic anomalies are. And you know what? I just, I just even just off chance, you know, what we're trying to find is, is these connections. And I started finding all these correlations over and over. I even put it to the test. I'm still doing it now. I just, I just dropped in only over the night before last. I dropped in the Hobbskinsville UFO incident into wow. the uh, into the, onto Google Earth. Overlaid the magnetic anomaly. And like, bang! They're right on it. Another hit, and it's like it's like ninety odd percent are in these locations. Wow. So there's really a correlation. Now, when I've been talking to these people that live near these locations. They're saying they've seen UFOs. They're saying they've seen lights. There's been mysterious experiences. There's been high suicides. And I thought, really? So I started looking down the high suicides. And, uh, I, I, and I put that to the test as well, randomly, because I do know that uh, Los Alamos Laboratories is built over a very high magnetic anomaly. And it might not be by chance, but it's there. And, uh, and I thought, I wonder... You know, is, is it really true that they have these high suicides? So I started to scour the internet, and all of a sudden, I came across a news item about the the severe high amount of suicides at Los Alamos Laboratories. <laughs> and I thought, here we go, the same sort of thing. And um, the A70 alien abduction case in Scotland. You know, these beings with three fingers and three toes. They were small. So these, I believe, these things. You know, they're around. These these guys are popping up. They've been around us, been along. They've been with us for, for thousands of years. You know, the, 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 the Irish, the old ancient Irish talk about these things being fairies, but they identify them as you know, small beings, sometimes three fingers and three toes. They're all over the planet, these references. So the, but there's, there's definitely a correlation between these magnetic anomalies. So what we found is, is that with this location, this tomb, cave, whatever it is, where they found Maria, is in a place where there's this magnetic anomaly and in fact one of the, we were told that one of the actual um hakaros were the grave robbers actually uh, had died uh, in the process of this of getting in there and uh, they had to use they were having so much trouble with the equipment because of the magnetics and the anomaly is that they had to get go back and get faraday cage type material which are these nets that you have to put around your equipment whilst you're holding it Wow. So it's the only way they could film and take photographs. Um, and uh, the story is, is that they were in there, there were two sarcophagi, um, and uh, inside the sarcophagi, one of these were lots of stones, cut stones, shaped like, shaped like alien faces, shaped like UFOs and saucers, but definitely carved types of stones, small stones. There were hundreds of these things in one of the sarcophagi. In another sarcophagi was these small bodies. Now, this is what's interesting, because... It would seem maybe the bodies are as old as Maria, which would mean then that these were made as dolls. These were made in maybe in awe of Maria, into in, you know in part of the ceremony maybe. 
But nevertheless, though, what is interesting is their representation of the elongated skull, of the large eyes, the three fingers and the three toes. If these things are being made that way, then these, whoever made them knew the visually of something like that. Then he starts talking to the Nazca people. The Nazca people, the ancients say, oh, our ancestors knew about the, the, these beings. They've been with us. You know, they were here. They were communicating with our ancestors. They knew not to go up into the mountains. They knew not to go to the, um, you know, in those areas. You know, and light, strange lights were seen. Um, but they also said also something quite interesting is that they had ceremonies and that they used to take nine-year-old children between nine and 11 years of age up to these caves as sacrifices and leave them in these caves the very similar type cave where like maria was found and left them there and they were never seen again they were disappearances and we thought okay we're getting into all these different things these disappearances so cross-reference magnetic anomalies and disappearances bang we get another hit then that the fall that like just like the 411 you know that that uh, david pilates talks about if you look at the national parks the magnetic anomalies, the highest people that are disappearing are in these locations. I'm thinking, I'm finding all these distant, strange correlations worldwide. It's worldwide. And I thought, okay, there is a good chance I know where this location is. I wasn't going to take the trip. I wasn't going to risk it. The Wakaros are watching me left, right and centre. We don't know who to trust in Peru. And what we also find out, Grant, is that that rabbit hole goes really, really deep. Because... It's not that we could get really much help. Nazca Mare contacted us and said, we want the bodies. Bring the bodies. Get the bodies. Get them to bring the bodies back, Steve. We want to build a, a museum in Nazca. We want to bring the people of the world to Nazca. Wow. This is what Nazca deserves it. I said, I'm trying. But do you know what? The Wicaros won't relinquish because there's money, lots and lots of money involved. And they're still trying to sell. They're still trying to make money. And uh, that was a real shame. But what I also find is on the opposite side, against us, when I said that rabbit hole goes really deep, Grant, it goes all the way back to Peruvian the government, people who are very well known. Some of them support grave robbing. Some of them I may even do well from it, to be honest with you. Um, and, you know, those people are supporting and looking after these vaqueros so that they don't get into trouble, that they are somehow uh, avoiding these uh, criminal charges and uh, and it's very profitable and apparently a lot of these lots of these things that apparently have been discovered maybe it would seem from my investigation what's happened is is that everything's been lumped together all these small bodies maria the small bodies and the, the long hands the small skulls the small bodies they all turned up around about latter 2016 maria turns out april 2017 gets lumped in with everything else i think that maria was the, was a separate discovery and i think what's happened was is that the, and something happened it was very very premature and they brought maria to the world by bringing it to the Incari, and Incari brought it out and it was it was an immature it was a premature move they shouldn't have maybe done that and i think there was a rush then hang on a second we've got a bit of a rush we don't we don't want this out we're trying to control it where is she and and i think this is what's what's been happening so we go back we've got the we got these uh this, this analysis we we come away we had to wait a long time for it all to come through and it was mostly focused on wawita the small child and uh, and maria now from the evidence that we've got it shows that there's a very good chance that they are connected somehow wawita the small child and the and, and maria in the same lineage somehow connected um, she, Maria has slightly large canines. She was, must have been definitely an eat, a meat eater. She has very large. She has large canines, um, but um, she's definitely female. And what the scientists said, and it was a very unusual conversation because the scientists said, and there was four of them on, on this conference call. They said she's primate. I said primate. I said, do you mean human? They said no, primate. I said okay. So what's, what do you mean? What's that represent then? He said, okay, well, how this is, is, is that through the, 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 through the testing, they found um, large amounts of heteroplasmy, which is a very high mutagen, is a very high mutation in her DNA genes. The downside of that is that there is no disease 
that we are aware of that can cause that amount of symmetrical mutation. The skeletal experts have said the hands and the feet belong to the body. They haven't been anatomically altered. There's no signs of a thumb and a finger being removed. Uh, those hands and feet are hers. There's no signs of any ears um, uh, being removed. Um, she clearly is a primate. She's female. When, and when I say primate, she comes from that family. And she's 95% belonging to that family. But it's the other 5%. Now, that it, sounds, it doesn't sound a lot, 5%. But 5% is a, a, of alteration is massive compared to, you know, the differences. You know, I mean, they laughed. I mean, they said, do you know how, much, how close we are to a banana, the humans? 50%, he said. I went, really? <laughs> and that's a banana. So it just goes to show that 5% could, could be massive, massive. And what is in there is this mutation in the meta-DNA from the mitochondrial and in the meta-DNA, there's a mutation there. And they cannot identify the mutation. And this, this got them into a tailspin because what they're basically saying then is that, because I asked them on record, what do you say? What, what would you say Maria represents? And they said, she could be another, another human primate that we would never been aware of which is massive world news or there's a mutation where we cannot work out how that mutation could happen. So the, the scientists won't go, obviously scientists won't come forward and say she's a hybrid or she's this, that, or the other. They don't like to stay, use words like that, but um, using a fish in official capacity, they're quite happy to, to say that. So when we've got all this and we thought, okay, what do we do now? Uh, well, they said to us, well, we have to do what science has to do. We have to confirm our own confirmation. This is about replication. It's bench testing. Because you might come away with fantastic results, which show absolute evidence. But then you go back and do it again. And when you get that second hit to confirm your first confirmation, that's it. That's all you need. That's replication. That's bench testing. We said, we just need those samples again. So what we did is we contacted Thierry. Uh, with I contacted Thierry and said, look, we want this, this final amount of DNA. And then, because I said to Thierry, what will happen is, if we get this, if we go back and we deliver this, what's going to happen is that our scientists are going to come forward themselves. Because they even taught, they even taught amongst themselves about having their own scientific seminar, a world seminar brought together to give this information out. Because one way or another, Maria represents something fantastic. Yeah, I'm dependent on what you want to refer to, she represents something fantastic. They're going to they're quite willing to do that. As soon as they get these results and confirmation on their own, that's what they're gonna do. And that's great for us because we're really excited. We're thinking, great, our scientists are coming forward. You know, these aren't just doctors, these are professors, you know, and, and well known at that. The downside of this is that we met up with Thierry, we met up in Paris, we took him for a very, very expensive meal and had a chat with him. We said, Look, we want to do this and uh he said wonderful brilliant absolutely you can do this and we were very excited um a week later we got a phone call to say they want fifteen thousand dollars up front and we just couldn't do it Grant. you know we just couldn't do it we just could not afford the fifteen thousand dollars up front to do it and i really wanted to and i had no time to try and raise it and uh it, it, it just one of those things that slipped that net i haven't given up that pursuit it's not about money it's about the truth and it's about it's about it's about educating people what's going on especially regarding magnetic anomalies and we're going to be covering that and uh, it's going to put this subject in a little bit of a different light especially when people start to realize there's a very high correlation you know i mean what did they do with skinwalker ranch you know skinwalker ranch right in the middle of it is a heart of a magnetic anomaly you know what nids did is that they took george knapp and stuck him out there in the middle of the field sat him on a chair with his little pen and pad and left him for a few hours you know that was probably maybe they shouldn't have done that <laughs> but um, these things are all over the place and it is a big connection and uh, and just to just to add to that we found a magnetic anomaly which was in ireland and um and this was about six months ago we visited we, we experienced phenomena whilst we were there, right on this magnetic anomaly. And it happens on a periodic scale of when the sun is setting. And, uh, and exactly the same place where amber gamblers are seen, these UFOs, they call them amber gamblers, 
because they're amber coloured. Same things which are seen out in the deserts in America. These UFOs which seem to act intelligently. And they're still seen there regularly. And we had we experienced some paranormal stuff going on there as well at the same time. So this is kind of what I was said to you before. There's this crossover point between the paranormal and the ufological. And people need a little bit of a better understanding and start bringing some of these subjects together to kind of get a bit of a better well, understanding. It's, it's all interesting as it unfolds. Wow. Uh, very interesting. You put a lot of money into this, didn't you? you it's not, for you, it's not about money. You put a lot of your own no. money in this? We did. We actually sold some personal items, Grant, to make it happen, to be honest with you, because we, we love the subject. We want to deliver the truth. We, but because there is something here, an anomaly within Maria and, and what she constitutes, is that we, 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 just did, we wanted to do as much as we possibly could to let the world know that this is our findings, this is what we've done. It was worth, I believe it was still worth spending the money on. It's a lot of travel, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of expense, hotels and traveling. And of course, having to pay people left, right and center that were blackmailing us at every turn. You know, um, it was, yeah, it was, it was a very challenging investigation and uh, we want the truth out. It's not about the money, we want, we want to try and get to that next stage, you know, where we are with this phenomenon. Well, wow. where would you put it in in category of? Is this the biggest thing you've ever investigated? Yeah, because because I looked at your bio, you got a lot of background in investigation. So, is this the biggest? Yeah, it's um, this is yes, I agree. Yeah, this is probably the biggest. I mean, being there, Grant, and and seeing her and touching her, uh, it, it's very is is very surreal moment, you know. And uh, for me, I knew she co she must constitute something. She's so profoundly looking. And uh, with many different anatomical anomalies from human. Uh, and of course, once that DNA came back, that sealed it for us. Because our guys, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're professors. They know what they're doing. And uh, when they came back with those answers on that DNA analysis, that confirmed to us that she's very, very special. Even if it's just, even if she just it represents some type of missing link that we've has been overlooked in humanity. That, the, 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 the outputs of that is, is massive, massive. And even if it was just that, that should be delivered, you know. So we really want to try and get this out. But the problem is, is that we're battling people which uh, are, want it for money. And this is what this is what I found the most funniest thing is, is that because people aren't being delivered the, all the information about Maria, and it's simply because it's not because there's a secret government involved. It's not because there's a society that doesn't want this information out on official capacity. It's simply because of greed, human greed, you know, and something of this nature, you know, could go uncovered and not be known simply because of human greed. And that's, that's our own worst primeval thing we can do, humans, you know, to, to hold back on something because just simply, simply because of money. I think when I was in, in uh, the UK, you told me there was, what, 17 anomalies with his body? There's 17 anomalies with the body, yes. I mean, if you, if you start taking the distance between the, the arms, the, um, the difference is the eye sockets, um, the, there's a slight difference in the jaw around here, the slight part back of the skull is a slight difference, and uh, of course with no, no, no visual ears, uh, the fingers, the, the, um, the heel, the, the toes, all these things all add up to about 17 anatomical anomalies. And no disease, no disease creates that. No disease creates new bones. You know, diseases take what is there and manipulate it and stretch it and mould it. You know, uh, the nearest thing to it is something called the um, uh, Marfan syndrome, where it causes very long elongation of the arms and, and hands and bodies with this disease in humans. But it doesn't create extra bones. Maria's got more bones in her than there is in an average human body. And it's because of those fingers. They've got extra to extra flanges in the fingers. They're extra bones. No disease. Our scientists know that there's no disease that can do that. But when they're faced with such a, hum a mutation there, because there is a huge mutation, which is evident, they're trying to figure out, well, what, there's got to be something that's caused it. And they can't, that is what they can't work out, the cause of this mutation, which has created Maria. And then she had no navel, correct? I could not see no navel. I could not see. I could see no evidence of breasts and no evidence of navel. Um, she was covered. There was a little bit around the chin area on her face where the skin looked, um, 
uh, looked pitted to a point where it was it, it looked a little bit like it was a reptilian a little bit around the chin area and um, there is a part on the back which has been photographed by people yeah. um, and they said this looks reptilian the, the, but the problem is the bit on the back is what's happened is which is very interesting is that 1400 to 1800 years ago maria was purposely covered in diatomaceous earth because someone round about that time knew about the preservative powers of diatomaceous earth it keeps insects away it dries the body out in that climate it could last for thousands and thousands of years and somebody knew that but then what they did is after applying the diatomaceous earth they wrapped her in a cloth like the peruvians do but what happened is is that over the thousands of years the cloth had permeated to the skin and caused this crystalline and when the cloth was taken off maria because she did have a cloth around her it's left these marks and what they've done is they photographed the marks on the back and said this looks like reptilian we we know that's what that is but however around the chin area we can see clearly amount of skin and she was they're not wrapped there they're actually like round shoulders and this does look very much unusual very much very much like uh, snake type on the around the chin area so she's very very unusual the um the fingers you had the dna from the fingers match the body because you you know what people are going to say and, and i hear it all the time it's like oh somebody glued fingers on the end to this uh body that's right <clears throat> the fingers uh, match the the fingers the hands are off the body they're connected to the body that hand belongs to the body same for the feet belong to the body and um, there is no the skeletal expert looked at us could not find no anatomical alteration in other words evidence to look for parts of bones fitted together wrapped in skin that sort of thing they couldn't find any of that what they did say and we made sure we were the first ones to identify the fact that those hands and feet do belong to that body and that was the most important thing for us because that was the most prominent thing wow Okay, last question, because I know you, you're going to take another call. Uh, the last question, what about the story about the eggs? Did, did anything ever come of that, the, the eggs and the, body, the one body? Yeah, the, um, we looked at the, the smaller bodies, which as far as we know, we, 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 what we did is we had them, the information, all, all the video, the footage, the scans, the analysis, the, the x-rays, were all taken to a number of professors and we also sent them to archaeologists, well-known archaeologists. We have a very well-known archaeologist in the UK. His name's Mark Holly, studied at the University of Liverpool. He's worked in the, for 48 years as an archaeologist. He knows animal bones inside out. Um, as soon as he looked at it, he said, oh, that's from the top part of a dog's, dog's skull. I said, what is? He said, the, the skull you've got. I said, really? He said, yeah. And he showed us how it's done. And he showed the evidence of them being filed down. So basically what's happened is, is that it would seem someone's manufactured those bodies, this, the, those all the ones, including the one with the, uh, the, the, the so-called eggs in. I mean, we don't know if there are eggs. You know, they could be anything. We, don't, we just really don't know what they represent. They could be eggs, but they might be snake eggs being placed inside. We just, we really don't know. But they are, they are seem to be dolls, you know, because they couldn't have moved. They couldn't have walked, they couldn't have breathed properly. The, 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 the whole mechanism of the body, when you really start to look at it, they would have just fallen apart, you know, as a living, as a living being, a living creature. These things are, seem to be manufactured, and maybe they were manufactured thousands of years ago in connection with Maria. You know, maybe it was done as because she was a deity and they, they, they wanted to worship her and they made these things, uh, and those were found in similar locations. And that's the only thing we the samples from those show that the diatomaceous earth uh covering uh, and, and the and the actual carbon 14 on the small ones seem to show the same age as maria so they're coming from that timeline but, was there DNA uh, on the small ones did you take any dna from the small beings no no because uh, each time we take a, a sample of dna we're talking about between four and a half to six thousand dollars wow um, and we wanted to make sure that well oh if i have the choice i want to take extra dna from maria because this really constitutes something this is a, a real body and um we concentrated on maria so we were managed to focus all our efforts and finances into maria and were we to the smaller body and come back with these results 
Um, but as for the small ones, um, we have visual confirmation from our specialists that these are manufactured by utilizing whatever bones are around Grant. You know, it could be uh, some chicken bones and some proper real bones as well, in some cases, human bones. And then you start to realize that Peruvians were buried with the dogs, very much like Egyptians. They actually buried the dogs with them and they're quite small, the Peruvian dogs. And those would have been found plentiful in plentiful. So you know, there's no, there's, they're, they're, they're very, very abundant. These wow. types of the bones are everywhere. Well, let me tell you, this has been a highlight of uh, one of the best interviews I've ever conducted. So I really appreciate you doing it and Welcome. hope we catch up to you Saturday and get an update on, hopefully it all works out and I'll talk to you on Saturday. Okay, Grant, great speaking to you, and I'll talk to you on Saturday. Thank you. Oh, it's been an honor. Thank you, Grant.